Whatever I do, I try to honor God. But you know, longing here, remember, in the context of the Israelites, there is a physical longing that they don't just do in their private time. They're required to go to the temple. They're required to worship together. That is a requirement. Now, longing for the Lord is thirsting for God in all of the context. Uh, context of our lives when we study his word we 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 try and ask the lord lord what is your will for me in my life and another longing is like what david mentioned in the psalms and even in in in, in lamentations when when the, some of the prophets have mentioned you know i would rather spend a day in your courts or i would even want to just spend time at the doorposts of the temple even if i'm not allowed in i would rather be there now do we long for that type of service in isaiah 40 31 we read there they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength that's that's what we keep on mentioning they that wait so our understanding is if we wait for god he will act but another interpretation is this when we go to restaurants, what do we find there? The person that will greet us. Hello. Good morning. What can I what can I get you? They will always start with drinks. You know who these people are? They're the waiters. They wait on people. Now when you say they that wait upon the Lord, he, yes, he is telling us to wait for him, but he is also telling us to wait on him, which means to serve God. Longing for God means that, oh, in all the moments that I have left in my life, because you don't know, we don't know how many years left we have. And think about the time that we had to refuse to participate or even to be part of the service of God. For whatever reason, remember, this is a very general concern. I know that all of us have our own contexts, but remember the time that when we are told to pray, we would say, oh, I'd rather sleep. When we are told to worship, oh, I'd rather be somewhere else. Or when we are, when, when the church is asking for servants, remember, not volunteers, that's what Pastor Eric Bautista said in one of his messages. We're not looking for volunteers here. In fact, even the pastoral ministry is a voluntary work. You need people who would volunteer, but that's not the issue. Volunteerism is not the Christian trait that, we're, uh, that, that, that we are trying to propagate, but it is servanthood. Are we willing to be servants? Are we willing to be servers? What if your waiter, you're, you're wanting something and you're calling that waiter or waitress and the waiter just says, no, maybe, uh, I'll just get your order next time. You're going to be mad. Wait a minute. I'm paying here. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you a tip. Of course, servants are there to serve. Are we longing? Are we seeking? Are we thirsting? The physical manifestation is seeking, thirsting in the, in the moments, in the free time, or not even in the free time, in all of the aspects of our lives. Are we putting God first? You know, even for myself, I, I wouldn't even say that I can think of God all the time. Because there are times that I think of food. I think of Oh, well, in the new year, I thought of crispy pata, and it was fulfilled, praise God. So the young people have been asking, what, what's crispy pata? Yes. You will find out the joys of crispy pata, but I tell you, you can only have it once a year. I don't think of God all the time. I wish I did, and I know that you don't as well. It's a challenge. But in most of our lives, you know, we have to seek Him first. There's always that pursuit. 
what can we be thankful for the moment that we, we wake up? Lord, thank you for light. Even though it's raining outside, thank you for relief. Thank you for the things that I enjoy that other people don't have. And that should lead us to empathy. You know, we were talking about empathy. Now, other people aren't enjoying this, so how can I bless them as well? Because God was so good to me. You know, longing for the Lord means really putting everything in perspective of Jesus. Now, for those of you, and I congratulate all of uh, some of uh, our brothers and sisters who are really dedicating themselves to God or serving even though they're not thanked enough. You know what? God is not blind. God see, saw what you did. God knows what you're doing. God knows even though we're not around to thank you and congratulate. Wow, this place looks amazing. Thank you, Brother Frank. And I, I mean it. You know, thank you for helping us. You know, even if we fail, realize that God smiles. God is, is so pleased with our service. Now, do you feel that happiness or do you feel that burden whenever we're, it has something to do with the work of the Lord. That means there's a problem in our hearts because one of the requirements of the Lord is longing. So if you are experiencing something in your life and you're saying, when will the breakthrough happen? Well, the Lord is probably saying, well, first of all, you don't have the humility aspect, right? Second, you don't have the prayer aspect, right? And then third, you don't even want to be with me. And you know, because we are the incarnational presence of the Lord. Let me explain that meaning. When you are, an, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He is carne. He is flesh. God who came in the flesh. But now that God, uh, Jesus Christ is with the Father Almighty in heaven, and the Holy Spirit came as our helper, and He is in us, remember, we are now the incarnational movement of the Lord. That means the presence of God can be realized in the body of Christ. So whatever you do to your neighbor, you're also doing to the Lord. You want to be with God, be in the fellowship. Truly, no man can be an island because we're not buoyant enough. But really, when we are in the body of Christ, the covering is there. When we are with fellow believers and we do to them what God has done to us, we also do it to the Lord. Not that human beings are God, but because Christians and believers have God in them. So are we longing for God? Are we longing for that fellowship with the Lord? Are we longing for that fellowship with believers? If not, then don't look too far for problems. The reason why we're experiencing problems is because God wants to shake us up and say, hey, you're not longing for me anymore. This can work in the nation as well. Hey, before you were the most powerful nation and now there are nations that are about to subjugate you now, national security is a problem. This also is for the powerful nations who thought that they were really powerful and now, covertly, they are being conquered in their own lands. And I think some of you know what I'm talking about. I was being told by some, uh, by, by we, we, we were having a conversation. I was having a conversation with Ate Ruth and Pastor Bob yesterday when we were here in church. They said, no, we were a lot younger. Uh, we see all around us lights and then 
people were so happy in celebrating Christmas. They would decorate their homes. They would put manger scenes outside. But right now, you can't even buy manger scenes in supermarkets. You have to go online for them. And they're very expensive. Why is that? And people are now not... I know that there isn't a war against uh, Christmas. Yes, we can still celebrate Christmas. We can still say Merry Christmas. But the reality is, people, more people now, are starting to lose interest. They're not longing for God. Because God is no longer the focus. That's why society is degraded. Evil is sort of, you know, getting an upper hand. And countries are being toppled. Well, if we want our country to be back on top, I, I agree with um, Pastor Franklin Graham when he said, you know, we got to encourage more people, more Christians to take part of the leadership roles in America. Or even in the Philippines. Because the Lord owns everything. Yes, there is a separation of church and state. There shouldn't be, uh, you know, in governance. It should not be intertwined. But what we're talking about is the values and even the mindset. Now let's put that in a local level. What about in the church? We're finding a lot of things that we want to change. And that we're finding a lot of things that we want to improve. How should we do it? Let's be part of the change. Let's be part of that improvement, especially this year and the coming years, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's long for God through our activities, through our service, through our worship, putting Him first. And He is the priority. And if we're already doing that, well, kudos to you. Praise God. But the Lord wants everything, not just a piece of the pie. He wants everything because it's His pie. And he's, he, would, he should be the one to give us that portion. And so the last, the last one. So we tackled about humility, prayer, longing for God. And now it's repentance. Repentance. Remember that in, in, the, in the following verses, in 11 to 18, we read there, sin plus repentance equals restoration. Sin plus repentance equals restoration. I know it's so hard to say sorry. Isn't it hard? So hard. Um, for men, particularly. When we're wrong. When... And I'm speaking to the husbands. You know, when your wife is right, and you should have made that turn, and you didn't listen. All you need to do is to just say, I'm sorry. But all, usually we, we, we just say, oh, yeah, you're just so, and you're just doing this and that. And, you know, we blame things. We blame other things. Even our pride gets the best of us when we go to the supermarkets, and we don't want to ask for directions. I'm guilty of that. I don't know about you, some men here, but I'm guilty of that. I don't, I would rather uh, look for it and go circles. And here comes my wife, already there. We tried to see who would find it first, but she's there because she asked for directions. Humility. But also, humility is saying, sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. The reason, probably the reason why I'm going through this is because I'm doing something wrong in my life. All we need to do is to just say sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. And you know what? Sin plus repentance equals restoration. It's all going to come back. The Lord will restore that is a promise in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. And what about 
Sin minus repentance. You know what? Sin minus repentance equals rejection. Pray so hard. Pray, 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 pray. Lord, 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 Lord. Renew us, renew us, renew us. Revive us, revive us, revive us. Lord, uh, bless me, bless me, bless me. There's no repentance there. I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions, but I'm talking about New Year's repentance. Lord, I'm sorry for this. I'm struggling with this. Help me, Lord. But if our attitude is, no, I'm not at fault. I don't see anything wrong with me. Rejection is there. Like a basketball player about to make a dunk and then someone taller is there. You're going to be rejected. Basketball one going. Let me tell you this story of a, a child who went to church. Went to the pastor and said, Pastor, can I have one rose? As the service is over, he said. The pastor said, well, why do you need that rose? Oh, of course I'm going to give it to you, but may I ask why? The child said, well, I want to give it to my grandmother. Because she's so good to me. My... Um, when I was born, my mom thought that she was too busy to take care of me. So when I grew uh, a little bit older, she gave me to my dad. And my dad was also very busy and didn't find time for me, so he gave me to my grandmother. And you know what? My grandmother took care of me cooks for me, prepares my clothes, brings me to school, does everything for me. This is the only thing that I can give her. Single rose. You know what the pastor is? He, he said, your grandmother, I will not give you this rose. Your grandmother deserves more than that. Get the whole bunch of flowers. So for all that she has done for you, she deserves this whole bouquet. Somehow, in our lives, when we pray, and, 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 the, and the child said, you know, she, he said, this is an answered prayer to the Lord. I've been praying to God that He would give me money or even the ability to give my mom, a, uh, my grandmother, a present. And now He has blessed me even more. You see, when we pray, especially when we re realize the true intention of our prayers and put God at the top and out of gratitude and love for God, we pray, He will even bless us more. This is, this is a reality in the, New, in the Old and New Testament. And He will restore us. If we're asking for restoration, we got to repent first as a body and as an individual. If we want God to act, we have to relinquish all authority to Him and realize that only He can make the changes. Only He can change lives. Only He can change people. Only He can change situations. All we need to do is to just Fix our eyes on Him. Meaning. Meaning. Just focus on the Word. Just focus on the service. Leave everything to God. And that, I think, is a wonderful resolution for this year. Serve the Lord with passion. It says in Acts 3.19, Repent therefore and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. So, our takeaway for this morning is this. We should ask the Lord to search us to see if there is anything in our life that might be keeping us from full fellowship with Him. God wants to forgive our sinful deeds through His wonderful grace. Revival is possible. But before this happens, we must realize that we need to meet His requirements. We must make sure that we are His people and have the right character before God. May we all fall in love with God to the point that He becomes the focus and the driving force of our lives. Let us pray.
Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Even though we are unworthy, even though we keep on disappointing you, Lord, you are still there. Help us to realize as, as, as people, Lord God, as individuals, that the reason why we go through challenges and, and unfavorable circumstances is so that we can realize our need for you or, or, or our helplessness. Help us to not think highly of ourselves, that we think too much of uh, what the world, what, what, what we deserve from the world or from you. And help us to realize, Lord God, that, that it is only through your goodness that we survive. And as a church, Lord God, help us to realize that we will never achieve breakthrough if we do not come before you in humility, if we do not pray together, if we do not long for you, and if we do not just remain humble, O oh Lord. Father, change our hearts and even um, so that we, we may even affect our nation or even our city. Help us, Lord, to take these positions where we can be catalysts of Christian change. Lord God, we pray that you would empower us this year and we see our schedules. We know, Lord God, what is the work that we need to do so that you may be known. Help us, Lord, to just submit to you, to follow you, forget about ourselves, and magnify the Lord through our worship and also our service. Help us be part of this, Lord God, because it would bring glory to you and it would bring more people to the understanding and knowledge of Jesus Christ and a relationship with you, O oh God. This is our prayer in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.